More than 60 years after the Brown decision, our work shows that disparities in education persist, and they are particularly acute among schools with the highest concentrations of minority and poor students. Furthermore, Black and Hispanic students are increasingly attending high poverty schools where they face multiple disparities, including less access to academic offerings. Research has shown a clear link between a school's poverty level and student academic outcomes with higher poverty associated with worse educational outcomes. The main sources of segregation in schools, of course, are residential segregation. But there are also neighbor, uh, educational policies affecting neighborhood schools, charter schools, and the use of vouchers. And there continues to be within school resegregation, where we can find racially identifiable classrooms in schools that are desegregated when the, school, when the students enter the school doors. Take a look at these four maps, four cities, Chicago, St. Louis, Baltimore, Kansas City. If you look at the heavily dark and green areas, you'll see the kind of residential segregation that I was talking about. And so these are, in a sense, racialized islands. In some places, some authors talk about this as hypersegregation. These same highly segregated communities like this are largely, mostly minority, high rates of unemployment, low rates of educational attainment, and low rates of investment in the physical and other material resources associated with providing students a quality education. Here's another way of looking at it. This is the city of Detroit, and this is just one incredible map. Now, uh, Eight Mile Road looks like a fence, relatively speaking, when we're looking at the separation of races. But you can also see with the clustering of Asians and Hispanic and other groups that we have substantial and persisting patterns of segregation. And these are from the 2010 census block data. So another way of looking at the amount of enrollment and the kind of enrollment, many felt that with the <coughs> growth of suburbanization and some outward movement from the cities, that we would get some suburban school districts that uh, were more desegregated than the urban concentrations that we've been accustomed to. So this is the distribution of school enrollment in suburban and, and, and um, urban districts by race and ethnicity. In, in 1993-94, about 72% of the students in uh, suburban school districts were white and about 12% black. So the change over time has actually been uh, to 2006, 2007, we now have about 59% white in suburban districts, 15% black, and the growing Hispanic population, about 20% Hispanic. Percent of suburban student group educated in a majority minority school. This has been what we've been trying to reduce reduce the amount of segregation, which means that we reduce the numbers of minority students who continue to be in majority minority schools, 50% or greater. So if we're looking at this figure, we see that <clears throat> for all students, about 35% are in majority minority schools. Minority students, 67% are in majority minority schools, again, underscoring the degree of segregation. White students, only about 13% are in majority minority schools. Black students, 68% are in majority minority schools, and Hispanic students, 73%. So this issue of how much segregation there is in racially identifiable schools is pretty clear using this particular chart. This is from the Pew Hispanic Center analysis of uh, Department of Education Common Core data. Isolation measure of typical suburban student. This is to get at <clears throat> if you are in a school, what is your own race share of enrollment in that school if you are a typical suburban student? 
for suburban white students in uh, <clears throat> 1993, 94, about 83% of the students that a typical white student attended school with were white. By comparison, that decreased to about 75% in 06, 07. For suburban black students, 43% of suburban uh, schoolmates were uh, black in 1993, 94, and that had increased by 1% in 2006, 2007, suggesting that rather than reducing the amount of segregation, we're looking at the likelihood that more of those schools could be growing more uh, majority minority or growing towards becoming majority minority. A similar pattern exists for Hispanic students, but not for Asian students. What do we see in terms of geographic region, in terms of the percentage of students in 90 to 100 percent minority schools? If we look at the data from 68 to 2010, we see some interesting patterns. 1968, even though we had the court ruling in Brown in 1954, even in 1968, we were looking at a highly segregated South for black students. About 78% were in 90 to 100% minority schools. Uh, in the border states, 60%. In the Northeast, 42%. Midwest, 58%. West, 50, roughly 51%. How much did it change by 2010? In the South, where we had more mandatory school desegregation, Percentage, the percentage of black students in majority minority schools had dropped to 34%. In the border areas, 36%, in the Northeast, 50%. Midwest, 44%, in the West, 32%. Percentage of black students in 50 to 100% minority schools is a very similar pattern. We've seen reductions in many places, and on the other hand, we've seen some degree of stability. How about for Latino students in 90 to 100 percent minority schools? In the South in 1968, and this is relative to the geographic distribution of Latino students, in 1968 about 34 percent in the South were in majority minority schools. That had increased to 41 percent by 2010. Border states insignificant or not statistically significant in uh, 1968, 16% by 2010. In the Northeast, 44% in 1968, 44% in 2010. Midwest had grown from 6.8% in 1968 to near 27% by 2010. Similar pattern of change and growth had happened in the West from 12% in majority minority schools to 44%. So again, you see these real patterns of increasing segregation. And again, for the Latino students in 50 to 100% minority schools, uh, the, the pattern is similarly troubling with very high in rates of change, increases in uh, the percentage of Latino students who are attending 50 to 100% minority schools by the year 210.